God bless you. My name is Pastor Marcio Gonzalez, and I pastor a church named Faith Endeavor Church here in Tampa, Florida, in, in the United States. And it is such an honor to be with you today, uh, Victoria Life, Victoria's Life, and, and, and Pastor Rodell uh, Malu. I, I love you guys. I miss you. I, I uh, hope uh, blessings. Uh, pray the Lord's peace and grace um, upon your fellowship. And uh, we really miss the Philippines. We miss Cebu. We miss IBC and all the students. Um, my wife and I send our blessings and really, really honored to, to bring God's word uh, today. Uh, just pray that God's peace be upon you. Amen. Um, I have so many wonderful, wonderful memories of spending time there um, with Pastor Rodell and the rest of the IBC staff and just seeing his church just become born like a little baby and to see its continued growth and um, the blessing it has been to your community there in Cebu is, is such a blessing to see happen. So uh, very rewarding and we rejoice with you, amen. Um, we have so many, so many great memories. Uh, one of my, my, my fondest memories is, is uh, during Christmas time there in Cebu. Wow, you guys know how to celebrate the birth of our Lord. Uh, just a wonderful, wonderful time of the year to spend Christmas in the Philippines. Like they say, it's more fun in the Philippines. That ain't a lie. That is the truth. Amen. Um, there's so many preparations and festivities and fireworks. Um, um, but how many of us, uh, how many of us take forever to put those decorations away? Um, I know some people who they will keep their decorations all year round and they're I don't know if they're too lazy or they just enjoy it too much, but they leave the Christmas lights all year round. Um, I don't know about you, but me, we haven't even taken that. We haven't taken our Christmas tree down all year. I have a very little Christmas tree. It's fake. I don't go into the woods with an ax and try to get a real tree. No, we have a little tree. It's fake. Hey, we, we bought it, we pay money one time and that's it. And uh, we keep it stored, but guess what? It's, it, it moved from the family room to my daughter's room. We never put it away. Now it's just decoration in my daughter's room. Um, but it's amazing how, how quickly some of the decorations disappear. Um, especially when you think about how much energy and how much time it took to prepare for these festivities to celebrate this great, wonderful day uh, that we celebrate the birth of our son, uh, of, of the son of God. Um, you know, I'm, I know some people, I see them like Spider-Man, um, climbing their homes, risking their lives to put the Christmas lights up in their house. And then just like that, the day after Christmas, um, they're already starting to clean up. Um, and there in, this, in the Philippines, it starts early. September, October, in the Burr month, right? If it ends with Burr, you're already singing Christmas songs. You hear it in Ayala, you hear it in the taxi, in the jeepneys, we're already singing Christmas songs in September, in October, and it's a beautiful thing that people are already preparing their hearts to celebrate the birth of our Savior. Um, but right after Christmas, what happens? We move right on to the next thing, and, and soon our focus becomes and turns to our sweetheart, right? Valentine's Day, the chocolates, the stuffed animals, uh, the flowers, the jewelry. Um, you know, I just spent all this money on, on Christmas gifts for my family. How am I gonna afford a, a, a gift for my sweetheart? And, and now we're getting stressed out in the anxiety with all the, the festivities that comes with uh, Valentine's Day. And we go from one thing to the next. And this year, 2020, um, has been one problem to the next. Uh, here in the States, it's been a furious year from the pandemic and the co coronavirus uh, to a dismantling economy, to social justice protests, to storms and hurricanes, to the fires in the West Coast in California, um, I believe that this new year is going to be the most celebrated day of history. People cannot wait to change 2020 to 2021. 
but we live very busy, complicated lives um, that are filled with distractions and we tend to go from one thing to the next. But as they say, there's no rest for the wicked. And if the devil is busy at his work in the kingdom of darkness, how much more so should we, the children of light, be busy with the work of the kingdom of God? Amen. There's work to be done and it's not going to happen by itself. It's not going to happen on its own. And so as nice as it is for some people to have a break, to spend time with family, um, we must still gather together and worship. And now it's time to get back to the work of the kingdom. Um, and I believe the great theologian and civil rights leader, uh, Dr. Howard Thurman would agree with me. He wrote something beautiful regarding this season and preparation regarding Christmas and, and the days following Christmas. Uh, Dr. Howard Thurman, he wrote this, when the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flock, the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among brothers, to make music in the heart. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. You see, my friends, it's time to get back to work. Of course, the work we're getting back to is not putting Christmas decorations up or, 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 or putting them away. It's putting Christmas out there for the world to see on a daily basis. And we have two ex uh, uh, excellent examples in the, in the story of Luke, in the lives of Simeon and Anna. And our gospel lesson this morning from the second chapter of Luke is one of only a handful of stories about Jesus' childhood. Not much is discussed, not much is explained about the childhood of our Savior Jesus. We are told that Mary and Joseph are getting back to work, doing what the law of Moses requires them in, in coming for the purification after childbirth. You see, according to Leviticus, a woman who had given birth to a son was to be considered ritually unclean for, for a period of 40 days. Um, long, it was even longer if it was a daughter, okay? After which she was to bring an offering to the temple and needing to be redeemed through a payment to the priesthood. So Mary and Joseph just over a month after Jesus has been born are headed to the temple to do what is expected of them. They're getting back to work. But when the Holy Family arrives to the temple, they encounter a man named Simeon. And Simeon has, it, has had it revealed to him uh, by the Holy Spirit that he would not die until he has laid eyes on the Messiah. As he enters the temple, he sees the child and he knows that the Lord's promise to him has been fulfilled at that very moment. And taking Jesus into his arms, he sings a song of praise. He says, now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of of your, of your people Israel. Simeon does the work of Christmas. Simeon does the work of the kingdom, proclaiming with joy, great joy, the good news about this child Jesus. Mary and Joseph brought their son to be redeemed according to the law of Moses. But Simeon knows and proclaims that this child will be the one to redeem them along with all of humankind, not just the Jews, not just Israel, not just Jerusalem, but all of humanity. Simeon knows that this Jesus is the one who will find the lost, who will heal the broken, who will feed the hungry, release the prisoner, rebuild the nations, bring peace among brothers, and make our hearts sing. And so Simeon praises God. 
so that all who hear him might know that their salvation has now appeared, that their salvation has now come. And Simeon isn't the only one. Luke tells us that there's also a prophet by the name of Anna at the temple that very same day. And Anna, like Simeon, sees the boy, Jesus, and is overcome with an urge to praise God and to speak about the child to all who are looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. She has found what they are looking for, and this discovery is something that she cannot possibly keep to herself. And so Anna does the work of Christmas. Anna does the work of the kingdom. What does she do? She starts proclaiming with joy the good news about this child Jesus. She and others have been looking for the redemption of Jerusalem, but they have been found themselves by the one who will redeem all people. Isn't that ironic? That here are people who are looking uh, for, the, for the one you know, that will redeem Jerusalem and, and, and they themselves are found. The boy came to them. What a, what a beautiful story. What a beautiful truth that there are people out in this world, people like you and I, who have been seeking truth, who have been searching for answers, who have been looking for healing. Some people are suffering from mental illness, from anxiety, from depression, from confusion and wanting answers. Why is there pain? Why are the things have to be the way they are? And guess what? God is so faithful. He promises that those who cry out to me, I will answer them and make myself known. If you are a, a seeker and you're seeking God with sincerity and, and, and diligence, God promises to answer you. He will make himself known. God is so gracious. God is so faithful. We don't deserve that type of mercy. And yet, as a child, God in the flesh incarnate comes and finds Anna and finds Simeon and answers their prayer. I am the redeemer of the world. And here I am before you. And their response is one of praise. Glory to God. Um, like Simeon, Anna knows the truth about this child and it makes her heart sing. And so Anna also praises God so that all who hear her might know that the redemption has come. Have we been faithful with our lips? Have we been faithful with our praises? Have we been faithful in declaring the promises of God that have been fulfilled many thousands of years ago? Or have we been keeping that to ourselves? Has the distractions and the anxieties about what's been going around us in our world, has, have that, um, like they say, has the cat caught your tongue? Have we stopped declaring the goodness and the promise and the faithfulness of God because of the things and the distractions that we're seeing. Has anything changed? Is God not still on his throne? Have we been faithful for, to, towards the work of the kingdom? And that's what our challenge today is. Amen. Um, brothers and sisters in Christ, um, praise is the work of a believer. Praise is the calling of every single Christian who, who has looked into the manger and seen hope staring right back at them. Praise is the response of every broken heart that has come to this place looking for God knows what, right? We all have something that we're seeking answers, help to these, these issues. And we come to this place, to this manger, and, and then we leave having been found ourselves, having been found by grace, having been found by mercy, having been found by peace. Many of us, we come to God and we didn't even expect to be accepted the way we, we are accepted by God. Who are we? When we look at our, our story and our history and all that we've done in our sin, we are but dust and we know deep in our hearts we don't deserve the goodness of God. We don't deserve to be showered by his grace and his mercy. We don't deserve the promises of God to be promised that eternal life. And yet that's what we get to walk away with. We come to the cross, the bloody cross, and we walk away as kings and queens. We walk away with the righteousness of God. That is something that we don't deserve, church. 
And all too often, the busyness of, of, of planning and, and pre preparing uh, gives way to busyness of, of packing up and putting away and cleaning up. And most of us can't help it because we're sort of on autopilot. It becomes automatic, moving from one thing to another, not wanting to waste any time. Uh, and so it's work. It's hard work to find the stillness in our lives to spend that quality time with our Redeemer, to be refreshed and to be reminded of these promises, to be reminded of His goodness and His faithfulness and His redemption and all that He's done in our life. But when we do, when we find the discipline to find that, that time of stillness, to get away from work and distraction and anxieties, and we remember the promises and the goodness of God and we, we meditate on, on His Word, and we gather with the brethren and we, we begin to bubble up praise and worship begins to fill our hearts and our mouths. Because that is the natural response to the truth that we discover in the gospel uh, that Jesus declares. Amen. Um, the prophet Isaiah, though he lived long before the coming of Christ, he knew well the work of the kingdom. He knew well the work of Christmas, and he knows that this work of praise is not for his sake. It's not even for God's sake, but in his own words, he says, For Zion's sake, he will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest. Isaiah knows that the joy and the peace and the hope he has found is something that is, is, is lacking in the world. He speaks to a people in captivity, uh, both the phys physical captivity of, uh, of being of living under exile under a, a oppressive regime, as well as a spiritual captivity of living under sin and the destructiveness of, of being a slave to oneself and being a slave to sin. The, 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 you know, the destructiveness that, that sin has, the consequences. And so he understands all that. And having received good news, Isaiah cannot keep it to himself. He says, I will, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord, he writes. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robes of righteousness. Isaiah praises God from the depths of his soul for, uh, so that all who hear him might know that their vindication has come, their redemption, their salvation has come. He cannot possibly keep that to himself. He must be a, 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 a microphone. He must declare the goodness and the praises of God. And that's because he had the encounter with the living God. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the world will not wait for us to declare uh, the gospel of the kingdom, the message of Christmas. And after Christmas, when the decorations are being put back into boxes and pushed deep into the closets and on shelves, and the world is getting back to work, um, this is going to happen. And we're going to forget about the message. Or we're going to forget about these promises. We cannot let that happen. And as I read, but when the song of the angels is stilled and when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flock, the work of Christmas continues to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among brothers, and to make music in the heart. And so this day, um, may you take the time to abide in, in the truth of the kingdom of God. May you take the time to abide in the truth of, the, the, of Christmas, that God came into our world uh, to save sinners like you and me, um, may you be found, may you be healed, may you be uh, fed, uh, may you be released, may you be rebuilt, um, and may you be made at peace. God knows your needs, 
uh, and the Lord will provide. He is a faithful, faithful, faithful God. He is a gracious God. And on this day and every day, may your heart sing. May you be filled uh, as you remember his joy. May that give you strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Um, and so that all that hear you and all that see you uh, might know that love has come. Amen. Love has come. And my dear friends, uh, let us get to work. Amen. The work of the kingdom. Um, that is our call. Despite the anxieties and the, and the concerns, uh, whether it be political, uh, whether it be health, whatever it may be, the work of the kingdom never ceases. It should never end. It should just open new opportunities. May God give you wisdom. May God give you creativity. May God give you a discerning spirit of the times and the seasons that we're living in. May we think outside the box. May we, we ask, Lord, whose burdens are we carrying today? You know, which one of my neighbors, who in my community needs your love? Who is it, Lord? Where is the Anna? Where is the Simeon? Who is crying out for their Redeemer? And how can I partner with you, Lord God? How can I be your servant? As Isaiah said, here am I, send me. And, and I just want to pray with you right where you're at. Um, as, you, as you consider these things, as you meditate on the truth of his word, um, may we get back to the work of the kingdom. It never stops. Uh, I just want to pray with you today. Heavenly Father, Lord, we, we worship you. We exult in you, Lord. We thank you for your faithfulness. Lord, we thank you for your promises, Lord, that although we are sinners, my God, love came and found us. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you that you have redeemed us from that place. Forgive us, Lord, when we forget that you have taken us out of the miry clay and you have delivered us. You have made us free. We are no longer captives to sin. Lord, would you put a new song in our hearts? And Father, as we lift up your name, as we praise you, my God, would the world around us see, will the world around us hear of your good news, my God? Help us to reach our cities for Christ, my God. One soul at a time. Help us to make disciples, Father. Teaching them, my God, all that you have instructed us, Father God. Help us, my God. Lord, we want to be uh, the, the preachers. We want to be the, those who sing songs and exalt your name as Anna and Simeon have, my God. Would you raise up, my God, your servants there in Cebu? Would you bless that church, Lord? Would they seriously, uh, most genuinely be a victorious church, my God? We love you, Father God. We commit this day and we commit our futures in your, into your hands, knowing that you are faithful and you are gracious. We love you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you once again for allowing me to speak into your lives. We love you. We send you our blessings. God bless you.